In an interview with Charlie Rose, actor and comedian Steve Martin was asked about how he developed his ability to write and a word of advice for people who wanted to get started in the creative business. And Martin said something that I immediately identified with. He said that he would read a ton of autobiographies from people who've gone from 0 to 100, just trying to study their journey so far and what they did right and what they did wrong. But he later went on to say that he'd be highly frustrated with these books because these books didn't necessarily explain how someone went from a novice to a professional. Like he'd read about someone going to thousands of auditions in a week to directly jumping to a role in a big production house. And that middle phase in between was something that he not only wanted to talk about but also emphasize on his own autobiography. And the striking advice he has for people stuck in the middle like myself is get so good they can't ignore you. While he goes about to explain how you can do that, I've been trying to personally put in place some systems to become a better creative, a better writer, a better videographer. And in this video I want to cover three systems that I think are working for me, I don't know yet. But hopefully, irrespective of your background or your profession, you can extract value out of these three systems as you go from mediocrity to mastery. Chapter number one, step it down by a notch. Over the past two years, as I've tried to cultivate myself as a storyteller, one thing that I've been constantly trying to do is to just be more mindful of what I read or what I see. And part of being mindful is just trying to be analytical about what I see or what I read. For example, when something blows my mind, I'd immediately go into this frenzy of trying to break down the writer or the videographer or the cinematographer. And I'd essentially try to put myself in those shoes and try to reverse engineer the whole process. But I failed miserably. Because their work felt so seamless, the creativity was somewhat invisible. And it nearly felt almost close to impossible to decipher, let's say, how a comedian arrived at a premise to how he wrote the joke and how he set up the punchline. As I slowly started to experience this more and more, I started to feel this unreachable gap between where I am and where I want to be. And I realized much later on that part of the reason for this is because I was only consuming the top 1% of the artists. We're all marketed the very best out there. And this makes it impossible to experience nothing but the very best. But as much as this sounds counterintuitive, the greater the content, the more anxious I start to become. And the more my confidence dwindles down because the skill gap is just indigestible. But you see, for every masterpiece of a scene, the writer or the actor has revved in thousands of hours of rehearsals. Behind every rehearsal session is thousands of hours of practice. Behind every practice session is thousands of hours of mediocrity and failure. And it's almost impossible to see through all of this polished layers. So what's the solution? Step it all down by a notch. In the case of the creative business, go see someone who's just starting to take off, give that indie movie a chance, and talk to and work with people who are just a couple of steps ahead of you. And if you're a writer or a creative, here's something that's been working for me personally. Subchapter, The Kill Tony Show. Conceptualized by comedian Tony Hinchcliffe, the show features world-class comedy writers, some of whom you will recognize, and all of them are placed in a judge panel. But the show allows aspiring comedians, people who just started out or people who are a couple of years in the business, to come and perform and work out their material. A few people do shockingly well, a few people fail miserably, but most people are people who are in the middle phase like myself, where they have glimpses of potential, they show a spark or two, but just aren't quite there yet. Now, after the performance is done, the hosts interview the interviews the performer, roasts them, makes fun of them, but ultimately they guide these comedians on how they could have taken something that had potential and could have scaled that up 10x. And some of these feedback directions was just mind-blowing to me because I identified with that help that I needed being stuck in the middle phase. The light bulb then slowly started to click. I realized that while all of this time I was watching this beautifully constructed building with great paint, I realized that I needed to first understand the bricks, how scaffolding works, how a building is put together before I attempted to start painting it. I'll probably make a separate video of the show alone because I feel it has a lot of merit. But if you're interested in checking out a couple of the episodes, I'll link in the description below. But this brings me to chapter number two. Not everything has to be super hard. After three years in the creative business professionally, I've come to realize a giant myth, which is the harder something is to put down or write, the more creative it is. Sure, there could be those moments where you have a seed of an idea and you're just staring at a blank screen and just nothing is just happening. 
but that automatically doesn't mean that you are on to something extremely creative in fact i feel like the more time you spend on something and the harder you find it to put down the more harder you will find it to feasibly execute it and this is something that i think reels has taught us in the last couple of years you know as much as i dislike the format for reasons i'll preserve in another video i do feel that we've seen a lot of people take the most randomest of observation and make that into real content and while we're on this deepthi mangotil she's a master at this if you haven't checked her work out uh, i highly recommend that you do so but you see that in most reels they just don't try hard they be effortlessly funny or effortlessly creative and you can see that not a lot of effort was put into this but it still passes that creative benchmark so i think reels is a great way to flex a different type of creative muscle and i think it's a mechanism that you can use to become more seamless and more loose with your writing if that makes sense which brings me to chapter number 3 don't ignore the clichés often times not just as creatives but also in general we're always motivated and driven by original ideas whatever that means and we're always taught to ignore the clichés but in the same world where we're all scouting and trying to get original ideas every rajinikanth film has the same intro has the same story progression has the same outro granted that every story has its own form of packaging but if you look at the inherent core of every story it's him making a grand intro it's him beating a bunch of people up it's him saving his woman and ending up victorious in the end and i used to think that this was a writer problem but after kushel and tanked which i thought was a brilliant movie i came to realize that we have some amazingly talented tamil film writers whose work we've seen in smaller indie ott films but when it comes to adapting for the mainstream massy audience the clichés sort of work themselves in automatically and guess what it works and i think the primary reason for this is because humans think in clichés we are conditioned by it and while the presence of it can feel repetitive the absence of it surely feels an audience underwhelmed if this video brought any value to you i encourage you to click on that like button as youtube would push this out to more people this channel is a combination between business breakdowns and more genuine authentic videos like this about creativity storytelling if that's something that appeals to you i request you to click the subscribe button and i will see you in the next one cheers